Hello and welcome to Murder Analyzed. Thanks for joining me again today. Some quick messages just before I go on to this case. But it is a disturbing case, this one. But just before I go on, um, brilliant. And um, we've gone now over 4,000 subscribers. So thank you everyone all over the world that's now watching this channel and supporting this channel. As I've said before, it's so difficult for me to keep up with all your comments. So what I've tried to do is by using Facebook now and Instagram is also um, add things to that so you can um, look at that as well. Also what we're doing now is bringing out the cases for the month or some cases in the month and they'll be updated again using um, Instagram and Facebook. So you'll see on the comments, I may just write one big comment on um, YouTube rather than each individual one because there's now thousands on each cases. But I really appreciate them. I do read them. I take notes of the cases that you've told me to look at. And as you see, as we go through these cases, if they are suitable for what we've done and I can get enough information on them, I will use the cases that you've put forward. So I need to say thank you to Scotland because I've had loads of people from Scotland. Hello, Scotland. Also, um, I think Northamptonshire, um, thanks for them, we've had loads. I've also had loads from Wales. Now, lots of people view in Wales, and I love Wales, and today's case is a Welsh case. So it's the United Kingdom, it's from Wales, and it's a 2013 case. Now, before I start on this case, again, I'm gonna put up a warning about this case. Now, this case is about the lead singer of the Lost Prophets. He is a prolific paedophile, or he was, and still would be if he was still out of prison. I think he got 35 years in total in sentencing for what he's done um, to children and animals. So this case will talk about paedophilia. It talks about the rape of babies it talks about lots of other stuff, but these are the main things in the content of this video that's coming up. So again, heed the warnings. If this case is not for you, because of its disturbing content, that some people really find upsetting. And I've had actually comments already on Instagram when I put my list out of what I was going to do. And people have said, because they've heard about this case, I don't think I can watch this case. And that's fine, that's fine. I'd just like to make sure you have a warning before I really start going into this case. So if this case is not for you, and this is the Ian uh, Watkins case in Wales, 2013, UK. Turn off now. So today's case, Ian Watson case, uh, from South Wales um, in the UK. He was uh, convicted of uh, sexual offences against children. Uh, he was also convicted of um, bestiality as well. He had two co-conspirators um, with him and these were his fans. Um, and they allowed their children then to be um, raped by this man. So Ian Watkins got 35 years in total. I think he got 29 years for the offences and then it's six years when he comes out that it will be under license so he's monitored. So it works out really at 35 years. He will serve, I suppose, his 29 years, um, I think he has to serve at least two thirds of that sentence before he's eligible uh, for parole. So at some point this man will be out. So it's probably about, he probably would serve about 18 years. So by that sentence, you can see the severity of this case, you know, of what, he did, and how he did it, and why he did it, really, was well, something he just thought he could. His two co-conspirators, I think each received um, 14 and 17 years um, for allowing him to sexually assault, rape their children. So this case is about that. This case though, I think with him, we have to start from his years, early years, or his, as he was growing up, because he was a lead singer of this Lost Prophets 
heavy metal rock band. So he was a very creative man, an intelligent man, but he was a paedophile. That's exactly what he is. He always was. Underneath all that, you know I talk about this mask of sanity comes off. Well, underneath his mask that he portrayed out there to people, even in the people that knew him well, didn't know he was doing this. And that includes all these members of the bands that he's been in and the people he's, um, you know, collaborated with. But also some of the people and the women, some of them TV presenters, quite well-known TV presenters, were seeing this man, had relationships with this man, but never knew what he was doing. The Lost Prophets um, disbanded in 2013 when this man was arrested for them charges. And they did everything they could to assist police in the end. Um, I mean about the police, because it took them a while to do what they were going to do. But um, they did everything they can to make sure that any vic victim of Ian Watkins came forward. They had absolutely nothing to do with this. And it's really, I think, tainted them in a way because people think, well, you're in a band with this man, you must have known. No, they didn't. They didn't know anything. No one did. Because he's a paedophile. And paedophiles, as I've said before, can be anyone. So <laughs> you don't know what he was doing. He was doing to children and using his fan base to get to their children, not the people around him. So let's talk about Ian Watkins and his upbringing. Nothing abnormal. He was great at school. He was well liked. Um, as I said, he was very creative. He went to a high school and where he met, uh, I think, Mick Lewis which was who he actually formed um, different bands with as he came up through his um, career. And that started very, very young, actually. He started doing different bands, playing in his garage and doing different things in Wales. Now, when you think about where he come from in Wales, Wales, the population of Wales, about four, five million people. It's beautiful Wales. I go there all the time. It's beautiful, it's a, you know, we've got some great talent that's come out of Wales. And Wales is a sort of country that when you are there and you are from Wales, especially, they really get behind you. They really, you know, praise you. I mean, we've had Sir Tom Jones come from Wales. We've had Catherine Sita Jones come from Wales. We've had opera singers come from Wales, you know, Best, some of the best rugby players come from Wales. I mean, they, you know, these are very talented people and they're very proud of where they come from. And the Welsh are very proud of supporting these people because they want people to succeed, as they did with this in um, Watkins. They wanted this band, you know, Lost Profits, to be successful. So they... <laughs> No one really thought behind this persona of this, you know, rock star, there was such a depraved individual. No one believed it. They couldn't understand it. And who would have thought? So Wells did lots of stuff. He did stuff for charity. He did, his mum had um, a kidney disease and he'd done a lot for charity. You see, in Watkins, he, he went on to um, we have a lot of festivals in Wales. He actually done Reading and uh, Leeds Festival as well. You know, they was getting high profile and he was doing a lot of stuff to give back to his community and society. Just, I think, I mean, maybe because he wanted to, because he said he wanted to support his mum who um, had um, issues with her kidneys. But behind all this was this man that was just really using everyone. And I think the whole of Wales, when this come out, was one embarrassed because no one saw it, no one could understand it. And two, that they put so much into these, you know, the support that the communities have put in, in Wales. You know, it's, it's a shocking case, this. 
and it really affected, I think, the whole of Wales. You know, and I, as I say, I go to Wales a lot, and you know, in this case comes up, you talk about this case, people don't know what to say about it, you know, because they're so used to talking about the positive influences that come out of Wales. This one is just such a shocking case. This one shocked the world, this case. Not only Wales. This case shocked the world. This is how disturbing this case is. I've had to take a break from researching this case on two occasions in the last 48 hours, where usually I would just research. But I've had to walk away and take a break. So you can imagine how this community, and I'm not saying that when the police didn't investigate this properly, that could have been one of the reasons, or it could have been that they was just absolutely terrible at their job. There was a lot of investigations into them, you know, because when people make allegations against these up and coming stars and, you know, when they've reached a certain amount of fame, when is it that people become so famous that they think they're exempt from the law? And I think this is what happened with Ian Watkins as this fame came up and in his, especially in his community in Wales, this support. I think sometimes it may go to their head, this fame and fortune they think they're going to get. But he was always underneath that though, a paedophile. And as, as he got more famous, he started to believe, I think, what people were telling him. How great you are, you can do anything. Because it takes something, doesn't it, to get on that stage and sing. You know, it takes a certain personality to do that. And you'll find with a lot of these stars and a lot of these famous singers, that's just a persona. They're actually usually quite quiet people. You know, usually very intelligent as he was. Very intelligent, I think he had a degree and stuff. He'd done his schooling, he was well liked. Everything about this man was, you know, if he was his parents or this community, you would have thought, he's done well. He's done really well. But this persona that he had on this stage, he then sort of took it into his reality. He started to believe it. But I think then it gave him a chance to do what he wanted to do with no care or no fault, no consideration, no empathy for anyone. What he wanted from his fans was their children. So in about 2007-2008, he had, this, this band now was getting quite big. He travelled all around uh, Europe, he'd done some gigs in America as well. Uh, he was getting really well known. You know, these were now earning money. He'd set up a couple of companies and a tour company and stuff that he can now manage. And this band was doing really well. And he had this girl, girlfriend called Joanna, I think around 2007, 2008. And I think she was a singer as well, but also from, from Wales. Um, and she started, I think she was actually arrested actually for um, um, indecent images of children, possessing them, I think, as well. But she said it was because she was trying to entrap um, Ian Watkins because there'd been a lot of allegations around Ian for a long time but no one because of this fame and this fortune so what he thought he had no one really looked into it so by 2008 I don't think she was with him anymore 2008-2009 she had gone into a police station with a girl with another girl and that girl's child and told the police that Ian Watkins wanted to rape this child and that he had been telling her this, you know, while they were sleeping together and that's how he sort of, you know, he, he was absolutely infatuated with raping very young children, babies. So what she's decided to do, because I think the police wasn't listening to her, no one was taking any notice of what was going on with this man, she took this young girl and this baby 
into the police station and said, Ian Watkins wants to rape this child. She's a fan of his and he's saying, I want you, but then I want your child to rape. And what do you think the police did? They said, <laughs> you're disgruntled girlfriend, just because he doesn't want to know you anymore. These allegations, you know, are false. Without even investigating this charge. Now I know we've had a lot of issues with people that have had allegations put against them um, of different offences against children. And some are not true. People just sometimes make it up and sometimes they do. Um, you know, and the, the problem is, is that if we have a fear of not reporting things, because one, the police won't listen to us and they didn't to this girl at all, even though the fan was in the room, the girl who was one of his fan members was in the you know, police station with this child saying this, they was just dismissed. I think we've had the case with Cliff Richard where he was, there was allegations made against him and it was proven that the allegations weren't correct. Because again, as I say, they're not always true, but they have to be looked into. And I think the issue with even someone like Cliff Richards, he didn't say he minded being investigated. What Cliff Richards was saying is that he, the way it was done by the press, he was guilty before people have even looked at the facts. You know, if they'd looked at the facts and then released out to the press that yes or no, he's not guilty or he's guilty, but they didn't do that. So I can understand A-listers or very famous people or famous people or up and coming people can have their lives ruined by being investigated by the police, but only if it's released out. We don't have to release this out unless we have real clear evidence that someone is a perpetrator like this because people have to be protected. So I can see both angles. I can see both angles of that, but what I can't understand is why the police made no effort at all to investigate this man in 2008, knowing that the person who had this child was there, present with this child, with the ex-girlfriend of this Ian Watkins, stating what this man was going to do to that child. Now that child was raped by him because of the police's lack of investigation. And you can't say they weren't told. So when this girl's gone to court on these charges, this girlfriend, this Joanna, saying, but I've tried to say, I've tried to get evidence, but no one was believing me. So she did try, but how hard can you try? She didn't save this child, she tried everything to save this child from him, and it didn't work. He still got to this child and others. Now the mother of that child is one of the co-defendants in this case who got either 14 or 17 years in prison for her part in her child's rape and abuse by this man. So this case just gets worse really, because this man now, as I said, he's traveled all around Europe. He is a paedophile, a very, very dangerous paedophile who had access to people he could influence hold influence over and he did and I I don't understand I, I know people you know have fans and you know who thinks that someone with a child would allow that to happen I you know I can't think of a name for these women I just I just can't I, when I was reading this case it, it shocked me so much that part that someone would allow that to happen to their own child because you want to be part of this band as a, you know, girlfriend or someone you can say, oh, I'm seeing him from that band. But you're allowing him to not only sleep with you and use you, but to abuse your child. 
it to me that is this he is a paedophile without a doubt but what are they you know when you really think about what are these women that allow that to happen i think that's the question here that you know as a mother i cannot understand i i just can't understand it and i, I you know it's it's you know <laughs> it's 14 years and 12 years enough for these no they should have all got 30 odd years because really these are children not only then did he abuse these children like that he then started to take indecent images of these children of that abuse what he had done to these children and share them out and you know so that and now you think these images and when we look on the dark web you know and you're, you're you know, and I, I said about a program the other day, didn't I? That I, I don't know if you've seen it on um, Facebook and on Instagram. I talk about this Channel Four documentary that's on every Monday, and this is England in, in the UK, um, and it's about the police and how they investigate now um, offences against children online, how they're trying to catch these perpetrators, and there's some issues with that that's going to come in this case in a minute. And it shows you on this program the difficulty that these police have got to try and find these people, to try and find and help these children because there's thousands of them. And as they take one down and as they, you know, save a couple of kids, there's hundreds more going up each day on these sites going up. It's a fantastic insight into what's really going on out there and really backs up everything that we're trying to say on these channels is about this is a problem which is worldwide. This is a problem in this country, especially in the UK, which is massive, massive. Now this man, this was in 2013, these images of these children, if they were put onto that dark web, would still be there. Nothing's coming down, let alone the harm that was caused to these children physically, mentally caused to these children by what not only Ian Watkins did, but also his co-defendants did. I just don't think it's enough sentencing, harsh sentencing to deter people. Now, as we go on with Ian Watkins in this case, in his imprisonment. He was also then taken to court, again while he was in prison, because he was found to have a mobile phone. Now, there's reasons why in prisons in this country that you can't have a mobile phone, especially if you're a paedophile. Now, no matter what Ian Watkins has done, he still has a large fan base out there, and we st he still has women contacting him. So he's got this mobile phone. He now wants descriptions from these women. Sexual descriptions. Because he's sex mad. Not only a paedophile, he is, he just can't help himself. He's got fans that he asked to do things. You will do it. Show me what you're doing. Do this to yourself. Do that. And they do it. Even to this day. So when someone like this a prisoner like this is caught with a mobile phone. There's serious issues here because he just doesn't want to do it. He wants to see it. He wants to see these women doing pornographic things to him themselves. He wants to see other things on there that he could get them to do. His fans, mothers, women, so he went to court, they found it, and he went to court and he got an extra 10 months on his sentence. But he said, it wasn't me. I was made to do this. Two lifers, I mean life sentences, uh, killers, made me do it. No, they didn't. They didn't, because he's even wrote letters to his mother. Send me pornographic stuff to his mother. Send me this, send me that, you know I, want, you know I need it, send me it. This man, is in prison for a reason. Now this man is so disturbed 
I don't even think, you know, 18 years, I mean, it's 2013 when he was sentenced. You know, we're 2021 now. A few more years, this man would be out. Really. <laughs> Unless he keeps on getting more and more in prison. He'd be out. To a fan base. To other people that are willing to do what these couple of fans did. Because that's what he's seeking out. That's what he wants to find. The vulnerable. Who I can control. Look at me, I'm famous. Come and be with me. Let me abuse you. Let me abuse your children. Because I'm famous. He's not famous. Now he's famous, I suppose you could say he's famous. Because he's famous for being a perpetrator of offences against children. He raped babies. Photographed them. Sent them out. Distributed. He raped animals. He tortured animals. Photographed it. Sent them out. That's what he is. And if that's what he's famous for, well, God help him when he gets out, I'll tell you. Because no way that when this man gets out is this industry, this music industry, going to go anywhere near this man. Now, he's still earning royalties, um, which is, he's an outie. Um, he went, he'd done that before he went in there, so he'll come out to about £150,000, probably a bit more than that. But should he? Why is that not gone to a victim fund? Because he's clearly got victims here. He's got two children that really <laughs> have been terribly abused, psychologically damaged by him. So that 150000 someone should sue him when he gets out because he can't have that money while he's in prison. But should he be entitled to it? Should he be entitled to it? That's another thing that gets me about these perpetrators. No, he's not allowed it in prison. But because he earned that money before he was sentenced, he will, when he's released, he will get that money, set him up nicely. But what about the victims here? That money should be taken from him. And I always say this because we've got cases in America as well. I think you have um, like the Manson murders, um, you know, Tex. He makes about $400,000, you know, writing books, different things. But, you know, should it be allowed? You know, should it be allowed that they're allowed to keep their money? I don't know. I'll leave that one up to you. But I think it should go to the victims, and especially when them victims were babies. That's who it should be going to. So his companies are now dissolved, um, but he will still earn royalties from any songs, and these songs are still being played. Um, he wrote them, he produced them. He was the lead singer of this band, this Lost Profits band. I think the band members, when this was broken up in 2013, took their money out of it and went off because they're entitled to it. They earned it. They've none, done nothing criminal here. They knew nothing. So they are entitled to their money and good luck to them. They went on and formed other bands and as dif they have distanced themselves from this man to this day. They do not want to know him. They've done everything they can to help, you know, victims and find victims of this man because they were so, um, I think, overwhelmed with what was going on because no one could believe it. So they've gone on now to do different things. But his share of this Lost Prophets um, music and stuff, oh, I don't know if it should be allowed, to, if he should be allowed to keep it, but who are we to say? So Ian Watkins was charged with catalogue of abuse, really. Too much to mention in one video, but you can see where I'm going with this. This man, you know, used sites, used his fan base. He's still using people from prison. You know, I think, what did he say to one of these girls? It's quite telling you, you see, his personality of how he talks to his so-called fans still to this day. So he starts off these letters, as he probably did in real life when he was trying to manipulate these women into um, allowing him to abuse their children. So he starts off quite nice in these letters from his prison cell, you know, to these women with his new phone number that he's told them. And he slowly 
goes in, you know, <laughs> to the how he wants to outline his life, you know, laugh out loud and all this sort of stuff he puts on there. So he has conversations, he starts to build up a relationship, but then very quickly these letters turn. Um, even in the first couple of letters, turn to more sinister stuff. Get a camera, get your phone, start taking some pornographic images of yourself and send them to me, you know, if you dare. You know, clock's ticking, I'm waiting. And then he starts bombarding them with this. Send me this, send me that, do this, do that. You know, this, this man is not only a sex offender of children, he's a sex offender of women. We don't know really what this man's done. I mean, this man just denied all these charges at first anyway, until the evidence then, you know, came out. I think the police set up this um, task force to catch him because of the amount of allegations that were coming in against him. Too late for a lot of his victims. But he, we don't know, do we, really? Because this man has been all over the world. All over the world. We know that a lot of, People who are famous don't get reported for what they do, even after it come out. We don't know. We don't know if he was that famous that people remember who he was, do we? We don't know if the children that he was abusing were so young they couldn't even speak. So we don't really know about Ian Watkins. Real crimes. All we know is these ones, what he was charged with, and even that, had to be really proven because this man didn't want to admit anything. So as with every other paedophile out there who gets caught, remember it wasn't me, it wasn't me. And when they do have to admit, they wait and see then what the charges are going to be, what evidence you've got before they really actually come out and admit anything. So I think this man is a predator of women and children, definitely. He will never change. We can tell that by the way of what's been going on in this prison. How he's manipulating women over a phone. What's it gonna happen when he comes out? How much can you restrict someone's life from that? We've had a lot of these, Vanessa George and all that, they're not allowed to use phones and you can have a phone but you can't have it so it downloads anything. Well, how can we watch these 24 hours a day? You can't. You, do, you can't, and you certainly wouldn't be able to watch this one, because this one's very, very crafty. Very, very crafty. So let's hope he does something else that keeps him in there longer, because this man can't help himself. And the more that women try and send him photos, the more that women continue to treat this man as something he is not. He's not a rock star. He is a paedophile. He's not talented anymore. He's just a paedophile. That's all he is. Now with all these cases, how these people have been caught, because most of the time, as we've seen with this case, it's not really, is it, through people walking into a police station and telling them that this child's going to be raped by this man. That didn't work. It's not someone else trying to keep images to show the police that, that this is what this man's doing, because that didn't work either, did it? How they're caught, and let's get it, let's really say it, because no paedophile is going to walk into a police station and say, this is what I've done, really. So the only way you can get these people is through hard work, really, like this Channel 4 shows, uh, show really shows you, because this is a real issue in this country. It's a real issue all over the world. No country is exempt from paedophilia, nowhere. They're everywhere. And we have to be able to do what we can to stop them. Now there was some changes coming into Facebook and we'll go on to that now. So we've had a lot of other paedophiles coming up and you'll see another case I'm gonna do in the next um, week or so on another paedophile that's up and coming or it's just been sentenced in 2021. But what's been highlighted in that is this Facebook is changing really the way of how the police and how others can track what's really going on online. It's going to make it more difficult. They're going to encrypt this 
you know, your um, messages, which is great if, if you're doing nothing wrong. But if you are doing something wrong, and, you know, offences against children is wrong, you know, it's just shocking. And the changes that's coming into Facebook are really going to affect how these people can be searched. It's actually going to really reduce how people can really track what's going on with these paedophiles. So I think Pretty Patel has said, you know, how this is really going to affect this. It's really, really serious here because these plans, you know, uh, of encryption um, from Facebook are under fire, actually, especially in this uh, case that I'm coming up soon, which is the um, David uh, Wilson case. And he had uh, 96 um, convictions for online um, grooming and uh, uh, offences against children really so that's coming up but what it what it does with all these cases when we look at these cases is how we catch paedophiles how we catch perpetrators like this because most of what we do now and I've said this before is online we've had grooming online we've had you know decent images of children put out online we have children being filmed and raped online and I've said before, these images of children that you are seeing are children. These are victims. These are not photographs of a cartoon. They're not made up. They're real. They're real. And there is a massive call for these photographs on the dark web. The more, the merrier for them. And if we have these encryptions that Facebook and other sites want to put out, that will limit the police or any other investigation looking into this, finding these people. One, we're never going to stop them. And two, these children are never ever going to be found. There's, we can never save these children. Listen, it's so difficult to save any child within these paedophile rings or this paedophile online um, sites and the dark web. It's very difficult. These people are not stupid when they do these films. They cover the child's faces. They distort the child's faces. They make sure there's nothing in that room or the area that's going to show where they are. You know, and if we now allow encryption to then, no one can track down these paedophiles. What are we saying? You know, what are these social media sites saying? That it's all right? Because it's not. So there's a lot of pressure now being put on Facebook and others. And so they think, and, they, and Facebook has come forward and in their defense they've said that they will share and they have shared lots of information on um, posts and stuff that they find to be, you know, distasteful or illegal. But they're not criminally trained. How many, once you start encrypting something, when nobody else who is trained to look at these sites and pick out the people that they know are predators towards our children. You know, these, I think what Facebook and stuff should do, all these media sites, is stick to what they're good at. And let the police and let everybody else who is into protection of children, is their main focus and concern, do their job. Don't try and restrict it. Don't try and, you know, because I don't think that anyone on Facebook would want that to happen. They wouldn't want that change to come in just to give them a better look on their page. If you're putting nothing wrong on Facebook, you shouldn't be worried. It's these, so really, who's going to win here? Who's going to win here is the paedophiles. Because the people that's going to lose are these kids. That's what's going to lose by these changes that what they want to bring in of this encryption. So I really hope that Facebook and all these other sites that yes, they're doing it, you know, for the protection of your data and stuff like this. Yeah, but what's more important, your data or a child's life? I think, you know, we really need to keep an eye on this, what's going on with these changes with encryptions and stuff. We really need to keep an eye on it because if we don't, and this then happens, God knows what's going to happen out there because what will stop them? In the end, what will stop them? It's bad enough online now. But if they think they're not going to get caught at all, what stops them? 
What's going to hold this back? So this in, <laughs> this in Watkins. He's also got who oh, there was a pack fake. He hasn't got one, but there was a fan base, fan club set up about him. You know, because they love him, no matter what he's done, no what he's done to these children. He's still got a fan base. And there was calls to have this shut down. I don't know if it was. And tell the truth, I don't care. I don't even want to look to see this fan base for a man that is a predator of such children. And but then you've got to think, well, who are these fans? They know what he's done. He's in the end pled guilty to what he's done. He's serving a very, very long sentence for what he's done. But there's still fans out there. To me, I don't understand it. But I'll leave that thought up to you and what you think about that. And I'm sure we're going to have a lot on this. And I'm probably going to have comments from these fans about they don't like what I've said. But this is the truth. This is in the case of this man and these two co-defendants. This is reality. No one's making anything up here. This is what happened. This is what this man is. A paedophile, a sexual offender of children, a sexual offender, a rapist of animals. That's what he is. And that's what he's always going to be, always will be, and there'll be no change in him. So this has been the case of Ian Watkins. 2013, Wales, UK. So thank you for joining me. I hope you found this case, if nothing else, interesting. Emotional, yes. You can tell I get very, very um, upset by when I hear that police have uh, not allowed, but not done anything to stop this man for a good few years before he could have been caught. He should have been caught in 2008 and it took until 2012 to actually arrest him, 2013, to go to court. He got his in the end, but the, the problem is, is from 2008 to 2012, there was a lot of other victims here. A lot of other, and that, that, that should never have been. So that's where my um, disappointment comes from within this case. So, you know what to do. Thumbs up if you've liked it. You can subscribe um, anytime you want. You can subscribe to where Lacey puts this, um, um, you know, logo. Um, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram and probably now, especially with Facebook and Instagram, you'll find a lot more information on there. I'm trying to get to all your comments. I'm going to make some big comments just on each case, um, but you can find out what's coming up on Instagram, on, on Facebook, on the new cases coming up. And there's a lot more discussion on there going on there as well about what we're talking about. I know in this case there's going to be some serious discussions going on. But I've left this case open to you and I will also put links to this case um, and so you can research it more yourself. There's a lot I couldn't say in this case because of the graphic material. You know, and it is upsetting material. And this case, even reading it, is upsetting. So if you are going to research it, just remember that. But thank you for joining me. Thanks for everything. Thanks for all the subscriptions. Over 4,000 now subscribers. We love it. All the comments. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking the time to watch Murder and Lies. So until the next time, bye-bye.